You're gonna be just fine. I just talk, you know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello everyone, welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry and joining me, as always, is the ever-quotable Jay. Hello. <laughs> and also joining us, of course, is the Silent Hill biker himself, Kenneth. Woo! And uh, today, well, I guess before we get into that, Jay, how are you? What you been doing? Uh, I had corona. It sucked. I'm I was glad you fine survived. physically, but I had to stay home from work, and I was kind of bored. Ah, well, fair enough. Uh, you also got a new tattoo. Oh, yeah, I started my back piece. Which looks wonderful, by the way. Thank you. I don't even know what your dream was that this art came from. I just knew that Reese drew it based on something you told her. I just had a dream about children reaching up to the Grim Reaper, like reaching up like they wanted it to be held. Oh. Okay, I yeah. thought it may have been a little bit more in depth than that. No, um, I, 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 there's a good chance I was listening to a lot of Every Time I Die, and it came to me from there, because they have a song called Floater, where they say, uh, take your children to the water, drown them at birth, save them some time, or save her some time, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was a chance it was from that. Uh, Kenneth, how you been? What you been up to? I got a six millimeter kidney stone that I've been fighting for two weeks, and it's oh, still there. Oh, damn, you poor dickhole. Jesus. I thought, I was so hoping you had passed it by now. Or, uh, it might, is it uh, large enough that you need to go get it broken up? Honestly, at this point, I have no idea. I went to the emergency room the other night, and they did a fucking CT scan. And it's half, it, at that time, it was halfway between my kidney and my bladder. It's going, it's making its way through. I just think it's making its way through really fucking slow. And also, I don't think it's one of those... Th- it, it, it's, it's almost like it's not completely backing it up. Because, you know, when when you got it clogged, you know, Jerry. I don't mm-hmm. know about you, Jay. You ever had one? No, luckily. I got all this other shit yeah. I got to deal with. Yeah, luckily you haven't. Jerry knows what I'm talking about. I don't think that the kidney stone is completely stopping up my urine from going from my kidney to my bladder. Because I'm not really getting, like, every once in a while, like, the other night, the cramps got pretty bad enough to send me to the hospital. But since then, it hasn't been that bad for for the back pain and stuff like that. Yeah, because kidney stone pain is the worst. For people who have not had it, it is fucking awful. I do not wish that pain on anyone. Uh, I remember the first time I had a kidney stone, I was actually underage. <laughs> Ugh, I was under 21, and the doctor was just like, you should drink beer. Just drink a lot of beer. Because it'll right. flush it out faster. And I was just like, this Can is do. <laughs> really bad pain, but I don't drink beer. Uh, that's disgusting. I, beer just tastes bad to me. But still, yeah, no, kidney kidney stones are the fucking worse. Yeah, so hopefully, um, I mean, sometime soon, I'm going to, I try to get a, I try to get an appointment with the urologist that they recommended to me at the emergency room. And I couldn't get a hold of nobody on Friday, so I'm going to try again tomorrow and see if I can not get another one and go get another CT scan or uh, ultrasound or whatever it is that they can do to try to see if it's even moved from where it was. And then if it hasn't, then go through the options. I mean, because I'd love to go ahead and get it broke up if I can. That way I can get it over with. I'd hate for them to have to shove that thing up in my up in my dick hole and grab it and pull it up. Oh, I'm uncomfortable. Um <laughs> Uh, as for me, I've been playing a lot of video games. I beat, uh, if you have a Switch, there's a game called Goblin Sword. It's like five bucks. It was on sale for $2. Get it. It's fantastic. It's so much fun. Uh, Goblin Sword? Goblin Sword. It, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a little platformer in each level. You have to find like three gems and two treasure chests. It's just a lot of fun. Highly recommend. And I've also jumped back on Diablo 3 for the fun of it. Playing that necromancer because I've never played him. He's stupid OP. It is just ridiculous. Um, other than that, not much going on over here. I went and got. I, I brought all my X plus Godzilla figures over to my new place today, so I'm excited about that. Nice, sweet. Um, but that's pretty much it for me. I haven't really been doing anything. I've been. I haven't really watched anything. I watched the the first five Planet of the Apes movies. I don't think I've watched any movies this month. 
Let me check my list. Slacking. Nope. No, well, I watched like 40 in January. Hey, hey, the thing about it is, man, I haven't really been watching like a whole lot of like movies, movies that, you know, are way... Uh, I don't know. I've just been kind of slacking myself. Yeah, I I've mean, been mostly watching video. I've been not watching video games. I've been mostly watching fucking cartoons. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did watch Psycho Gore Man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be right up Jay's alley. Um, I watched it. It's great. Yeah, I watched Saint Maud, which I watched that too. Uh, I think people are hyping it up a little too much, but uh, it's I, still good a good atmosphere, weak story. Yeah, it's still a good movie. Uh when we get to the episode where we do hereditary i have some comparisons i would like so i'll have to do like a spoiler warning when we get to there but um speaking of hereditary we did a list of nine movies and we said y'all motherfuckers get to choose and the winner of the first of these nine episodes was my choice cat sick blues which means all of you people are fucked up because you chose that one uh cat sick blues came out in 2015 uh director directed by dave jackson and written by uh dave jackson and andrew gallacher i don't know how to say your name bro um so this movie uh i want to say who recommended i think it might have been uh derek uh from underwater kaiser from outer space and uh, cinema attack I think he recommended this to me a few years ago uh, because he knows my love for cats. And I watched this and I was just like, everyone should see this movie. It is just fucked up in the most glorious of ways. And so when we started putting this together, I'd always wanted to do this movie on the podcast, but I was kind of worried about how if y'all would find it as good as me or if y'all would just be like, "Eh, it's just really fucking weird and maybe going for too much shock value. But like, I personally think this is a fucking lovely movie and this was a first time watch for both of y'all right yep yep okay cool uh we're gonna go with i want to hear first impressions uh kenneth what are your first impressions of cat sick blues i just wasn't feeling it yeah not up your alley Uh, i mean i can get into the details later but i mean uh, like when I uh, we sat down to watch it, I watched it today. As a matter of fact, I watched it this morning. Hey, me too. Yeah, and uh, I was sitting there and I was watching it, and I'm like, I'm I was I was into it at spots, but overall, I was just like, this is kind of boring. <laughs> I mean, the whole movie. I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, wow, All right. yeah. I was just like, the gore was okay. You know, but uh, I feel like there was a few missed opportunities. And when I was watching it, I was just like, "All right, okay, well, we'll come, we'll come back to you because I'm very curious to what missed opportunities there were." Uh, Jay, what about you? Uh, ditto. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I kind of feel the same way. Like the entire time I was watching it, I was saying to myself, "Man, I should be into this." But I wasn't. And right. I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I'm but I couldn't exactly figure out why. Way, Jay. I was like, it's <laughs> fucked up. I like fucked up. It's you know, it's got it's it's pacing seemed fine. The the, the kills were good. It was weird. And I was just like, why am I not into this? And I still to to right now have not been able to put my finger on why I was not into it. When I really feel like I should have been, but I just wasn't. Wow, I, I completely uh, concur with Jay the whole way of what he just said. I, I feel exactly the same way. I don't know how I, mean, I feel so about y'all now. I mean, we're obviously going to get into it. There are things that I enjoyed, but overall, I have no desire to own this or ever watch it again. I completely agree. Wow, this was my third time watching it. Um and I still loved it. I think the pacing is great. I think it, it does a very good job of making sure something happens. Uh, well, that's just that's just it. it I, it's not like I think it's a bad movie. I just wasn't into it. <laughs> it's such a weird feeling that I don't very often get. Usually I either like a movie or I don't. And this one, I felt like I should like. And I just couldn't. And I'm having a hard time figuring it out. 
Well, let's try to figure this out then. Uh, I guess we'll let Kenneth lead the floor, and then that way we can kind of see. Uh, maybe we can figure out what, what Jay can put a finger on it, and I can give my rebuttals as to why I love the film. So, Kenneth, w- w- let's get into some of those details. Right. Hang on, give him a pipe going. Oh, okay, I'll get the pipe for this one, guys. <laughs> Stroke the beard. Puff your pipe. Sherlock Holmes, this motherfucker, Kenneth. You're like, sit down, boys. I have a tail. <laughs> All right, so it, going into it, you know, when the when the movie started off, you know, with the with the two chicks sitting there high looking at the cat videos and and you know the whole bit. I'm sitting there and I'm watching it and I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Chick goes upstairs for the cat, whatever, throw some water on it. I was like, okay, I was expecting something fucked up to happen to the cat. Because I knew the the general basis of this movie is that, you know, dude's cat dies and he's trying to bring the cat back by doing some weird ritual or whatever. And so I knew the basic gist, but I didn't think it was going to start off with, you know, dude in the outfit. I thought it was going to start off with something happening to his cat. So, And then I was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he kills the chick, shovel, cut, takes her head off, goes downstairs, kills the other one, sits down, start watching the you know, the cat video or whatever with the head next to him. And then the punk music comes on with the opening sequence for the credits. It totally took me out of it right off the bat. I will agree that, 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 that music is a bit too abrasive. There are other times in this movie. There's another scene in this movie where, where they use the music to, to fucking wonderful proportions but i do agree that the the opening of this film that punk music is too abrasive yeah that was just too much man i was just like that was the first instance where i was just like okay i am totally out of this already all right and then and then we start going into the other parts of it where you know the whole scene with the girl getting raped by the guy that looked like he 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 had mental issues okay yeah claire who was the owner of the white cat that that people were watching on YouTube. Right. Okay. So, and I'm sitting there and, and, and this whole sequence goes on and I'm like, all right, uh, uh, let's see where this goes. And honestly, when it really comes down to it, aside from the, uh, from the two people being in the, in the, in the help thing for lost animals, I don't really see why the whole rape thing with this woman took place, why it needed to, what it was there for. Um, so throughout the movie, they take a few shots of commentary, social commentary at, uh, social media, whether it's, uh, the people taking picture of her cat's blood stain, the people reacting to her rape video. Yeah. uh, I mean, and I get that. I get that. But you're you know, right. It doesn't I, show... That has nothing to do with our main character, of Ted. It, it feels like we're seeing extra trauma in her life. It, and I could see the argument being that, that the, the rape scene is there just for the shock value of it. But right. I think it does kind of make it a more in-depth character. But at the same time... I also, I, I kind of agree with you because there's a point where after she meets Ted at the uh, dead animal, uh, A, AAA, AA, whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, meeting, uh, she ends up fucking Ted and she's not into it. And I'm just like, this is the pers- first person you choose to have sex with after being raped? Yeah, like there's, there's it a, makes me a whole lot of that. wonder about her psychological state. And I think they were making it to where like, the 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 death of her cat, the rape, the failing of her YouTube video, uh, uh, like all of this goes into like why she would actually fuck someone like Ted or be with someone as awkward as Ted. She would normally never do that, but her mind's just in such a, a decrepit state because of these things that happen to her, which can happen if you're a YouTuber and you're not using a PO box. People can find where the fuck you live and they can do horrible things. Like people die for YouTube shit all the fucking time. There, There's the story of the chick who got big singing and at a meet and greet dude just fucking shot her. Jesus. Um, Like that's a real story see, here just, in Tennessee. I'm... A guy just got shot and killed because him and a buddy 
were doing a fake robbery for YouTube and they had butcher knives and they got sh- one of them got shot and killed. Now, see, I've always thought those silly prank videos where you, you run at somebody in the dark were really dumb because someone's going to get killed. And see, I'm not disagreeing with the fact that she had a lot of shit going on in her life. I just feel like that it, I, I, like, I feel like that if she had let dude in her house, damn, you know, he had killed the cat, chunked the cat out the window, damn, <clears throat> and then, you know, uh, uh, he he beat the shit out of her or whatever or something like. That. I just feel like that that was just too much. It was just, and, and then and uh, I, I don't know. I just I didn't feel i felt like that that whole sequence right there was just kind of uh, just kind of didn't feel right for the movie for me for one two the social commentary that they were trying to get into with you know like what we were talking about about the reaction videos and everything else i totally got what they were trying to do with the social commentary i got it it just, just felt out of like place okay yeah, yeah. I, I could see how all that feels out of place uh because it does this movie does feel like we're following two people who have just insane shit going on. And when you just depose the two of this guy who obviously has a mental illness and is trying to bring his cat back to life by killing nine people, uh, just opposed to a woman who who's big on YouTube because of her cat and has a crazy fan who ends up uh, killing her cat and raping her, like... It seems like that that those are two characters from two different movies that should not be meeting. Yeah, I mean, it just it seems like there's too, it it just seemed like there was too much to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 I feel like that, you know, even if her like even if she'd have ended up, you know, meeting that guy in in the thing for the uh, the grieving of the animal if just her uh, if just her animal had died that would still would have been a good setup for how they ended up meeting each other do you, you know think she saying? would have had sex with him had she had not been raped i know that's a weird question i, I, I dude i honestly I, I i can't even begin to try do, to put myself into the mind state let me, of let me of rephrase what it would be like it for a girl that had been through something like that. Um, do if she would have met him there and had slept with him, would you have looked at it and been like, "I really don't believe she would have fucked him." Trauma makes you do crazy things. Well, no, no. I'm saying that's what that's my thing is. I'm saying that because of if the, she hadn't the, went through the trauma that she went through, do I think that she'd have met him? And, right, and, but I'm saying even if she had just lost her cat. Trauma honestly, makes people do crazy things. Honestly, when it really comes down to it, my personal thought would be that I don't think she. It, it, I feel like that no matter what, it was unbelievable for her to fuck that guy. Okay, fair. No matter what. Okay, I know I agree with you because, like I said, what, I remember the first time I watched this movie, my first reaction to that scene was, "This is the first person she chose to have sex with after being raped." I don't. I mean, even if you take the rape and the cat out of it in any way, I don't think if if you'd have put, you know, if you'd have put fucking damn, she got raped, the her cat died, her mom just fucking committed suicide, her dad just got hit by a fucking bus, and her best friend just got decapitated by a fucking damn, you know, some guy that was trying to figure out the Antichrist. Goddamn, all that <laughs> shit together. If you'd have put it all together and it happened to her within an hour, I still don't think that she'd have fucked that dude. Fair, uh, fair. Now, I, I, so I do agree. I just know that people have had sex with me, so I just assume anybody's willing to do yeah, anything. Yeah, but you're a cute dude and you got a great personality. <laughs> yeah, you have a personality. This guy you don't has go into no... a fucking seizure Listen, from somebody can, talking can about losing their animal. Can you let me make animal? a self depreciating joke, please, without trying to hype me up? Damn you, boys. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not what we do. But no, I, I do agree that there that this movie does suffer from a big disconnect it's one of those movies where i feel like you have to use the excuse of saying you just have to go along for the ride and i and i um, dude, i'm not I saying tried. that i did i Bad really did i tried I, I made it through the whole thing so okay well let, 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 we'll continue on because i i think you have very valid points i really don't think i have an argument against what you said it does work for me but i 100 percent see every problem you just said and agree those are problems. 
Now, I can keep going, or we can let Jay have the floor for a minute. You choose. Uh, Jay, do you have something to interject? Not interject. I mean, I can add a little bit. Add away. You mathematician, okay. you. So, the actors aren't that great uh, is definitely part of it. And so, like, I feel like the 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 YouTubers cat getting killed and her getting raped could have been better if the acting was better. Like, it felt less impactful, and it felt like they were just throwing that in there just because, because the acting wasn't as solid as it could have been. Yeah, I also feel like they really, uh, for a movie as wild as this, they did not do, like, a very in-your-face vicious rape scene. Like, it, it, it was more low-key, uh, it was think, more awkward. I could have took the rape scene, took take it or leave it, as they say. Um, I think they could have put more into the cat accidentally getting killed. Like, elongate him holding the cat and her trying to get it back. Make the cat a little bit more active. Like, it was making barely any noises. And, he, and you know, if he's moving around fast enough to snap its neck you think you'd be trying to fight you know, something like that like there just um, wasn't any tension about it they did say the cat was sick and was lethargic and hadn't really been moving around but yeah at the same time i think well, the cat would have freaked out some fucking cat noises uh, yeah they had that guy doing perfect cat noises they could have used some of that right. <laughs> i mean and, and i mean honestly if i hadn't have been watching it as hard as i would I, as hard as i was i probably wouldn't even have heard the cat's neck break or they could have had him have the cat alive. It, like, scratches him, so he throws it out the window, and that's how it dies. Yeah. That could have been another one. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like I said, dude. I, mean, I, I mean, wasn't happy to watch the cat die. Actually, when I sent you that message, it says, why are you making me watch this? That is exactly the scene that I just finished. I didn't like watching the cat die, but I just it just wasn't impactful enough for I what agree, they were it, going yeah, for. And I agree with Jay. I mean, to, to, to kind of uh, piggyback on that a little bit. I feel like that that scene didn't have enough the power that it needed for the impact they were going for. Yeah, it was awkward versus. Yeah, it just it it, it just wasn't right. You know, disturbing. What I'm saying? It could have been disturbing. A rape, a dead cat, and a rape should be disturbing, but it was just awkward. Yeah, I feel like this movie really leans on awkward. I like that's kind that's of fair. it's I, it's kink, I guess, and I'm not one to kink shame. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I do think you're right. I think, uh, the, the cat net break is actually the first time I watched this, it was like halfway through the film before I realized that the guy who raped her was not the guy in the cat mask. <laughs> like, I asked Cheyenne that. I was just like, is that the dude that was wearing the cat I, mask? I did. I understood that that wasn't what was happening, but yeah, maybe they could have done that. He could have raped her in the cat mask and then like met her later <laughs> the cat sad place and then the same thing you know like saying that it was awkward i mean damn it, it was just it, it was awkward not for awkward sake it was just awkward you know like Kristen wig is awkward okay this yeah, was so not funny. yeah but that's what i'm saying i mean she's supposed to be awkward that that that's part of her shtick but this was I don't. I, I, I again. I can't. I can't fucking put my finger on it. There's just something that ain't right about it. It was just. It didn't grab me. Like that whole opening sequence. None of it grabbed me. None of it was just like. None of it made me feel fucked up. None of it fucking. You know what I'm saying? Got underneath my skin as much as it should have. You know what I'm saying? I mean nothing like that. It just. That's I was it. just like. It, it, that's it, why I could. That's why I didn't like it. I should have liked everything that happened in this movie, but I couldn't because it just wasn't. It was the way everything was done wasn't grabbing me. The setup and the ideas were fantastic, and the execution was just off enough that I was like, "Ah, God, I really should be enjoying this guy face fucking a woman to death with a giant cat dildo." But nope. And see, that's another missed opportunity. And I'm like, this dude is running around with this fucking thing that looks like it should have been in seven. And he fucking, and, and all he does is face fuck a chick with it? Well, I, I think that comes down to budget. I don't think they had the budget to... Yeah, but even in that, man, I mean, you could have seen some blood spraying up or something like that and the absolute awkward look of pain on whoever he was nailing with. Even Cheyenne said something about that. She was just like, I feel like there was a lot of missed opportunities in this movie with that big old cat dick. 
<laughs> yeah, I would say it would have been nicer if we would have seen the big cat dildo, uh, cat dick dildo used more efficiently and us got to see it. Because in, in this movie, a lot of the uh, the kills uh, are a lot of sleepaway camp. You see it happening off, well, it happens off screen and then you see the aftermath. And I'm okay with that, but I don't know. It's like that, the whole Ted Bundy sequence, you know what I'm saying, where he goes in and he kills all four of the chicks in the hostel, and it's in slow motion, so it's supposed to look that much more cool. That was the least realistic sequence in the entire movie. That's my favorite scene in this entire movie. Because it was like, it was supposed to have it because it was in slow motion and you're seeing the reactions of everybody and, and how, you know, the whole thing that was going on and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, this is supposed to have such power and it looks so fucking fake. I, oh man, for me. The blood looked like, the, even the blood looked like red paint and I'm like. Damn, man, where are we at? The late 70s, early 80s, or is this the new millennium? What the fuck? Yeah, I'll give you that, that some of the, the, the blood spray, especially the neck cut, yeah. uh, looked pretty bad. But I I love that scene. I love the music, the, the style of music that's playing while he is pulling a Ted Bundy on these four chicks and, and killing them. I like the face fuck scene. Um, I didn't have, pro- I, it seems I don't have a problem with a lot of the stuff y'all are having a problem with. I don't know if it's me just accepting it because I just, I like this particular style of crazy if I just go along with the riot, but like none of that bothers me to me. I'm in it like 100% when that music's going, I do, I will say I could not tell when he was stomping that chick, if he was stomping her in the face or the chest. Uh, I did think the sequence when he was doing that was cool because when he was bringing his foot up, you could see the blood coming off of his foot in slow motion. Mm-hmm. I thought that was cool, you know. And, and surprisingly enough, the only time the blood looked realistic is when it's coming off of his shoe. Yeah, I well, I, I looked decent when he was bashing the um, chick who led the Dead Pet Society facing with the kid. dog statue. That was my favorite kill. The only problem that I had with that sequence is the fact that there was no titties in that sequence. Uh, that's fair. Uh, you only get two sets of titties in this movie. They're they're both because that was great. a very large set of titties, and we didn't get to see them. I was them. so upset. Right? I understandable, understandable. Especially um, since he was already in a nightgown. Right. I'm expecting like, a whole damn, lot more. Just rip it off, bro. Come on. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Or get down with that big old cat deal, though. Nothing. For real. Um. But the bashing her in the face with that fucking ceramic dog, that was, that was pretty cool. I yeah. love that it was a dog, too. Yeah, that, one, that was good. That I, was really dog loving bitch. <laughs> I also, I really liked the scene of him watching himself kill the sex worker. I did like that. That, I thought, was really cool. Just him rewinding it over and over. Because fir- when I first watched it, I was kind of like, is this him fantasizing and seeing shit? Is this not real? But then they do that pull out and you see her head on the thing. And this is right after he sees the rape video of Claire. Um, He goes from watching him fucking gut a woman to watching the rape video of Claire to this nice camera angle pull out and you see the sex worker's head like on a lamp. Yep. Yeah, I thought I thought he had like got her on stream and then went to her house while he was like, you know what I mean? But yeah, that was a good reveal. Yeah, I, I really liked that one. Um, uh, the him, one of I also really like the uh, hooker's death. He goes and gets a hooker and he has her on all four and he's riding her and he rides her into the kitchen. And then he gets on top of the refrigerator and he jumps down and like hits like like where her, her spine and hip connects and fucks her legs up. And then he just kind of like slashes her throat. And then he just kind of like starts pacing back and forth doing these weird ticks and fidgets with his arms as she's just bleeding the fuck out. 
Like, he doesn't go back to, like, kill her and make her die faster. He is just awkwardly as fuck pacing and fidgeting. And it goes on for a little too long, and it's awkward. And I just really like it. Honestly, you know what my favorite sequence in the entire movie was? Is when he's jerking off while his wife sweeps? Uh, yeah, when he's telling when he's telling the story, and he sees his, you know, talking about his wife, and that whole thing. Yeah, that whole sequence where he's telling the story and the thing, and as he's standing up, like who he is and all that shit, and then he comes out of it. Wait a and, second, do I have a wife? <laughs> yeah, that that right there to me, that was the best sequence in the entire movie to explain his psychosis. Yeah, for lack of a better term, yeah. That was to me. That was the best thing. There's a uh, deleted scene. I've only been able to find one deleted scene for this because there's not a lot out on this movie, unfortunately. Um, but there's a deleted scene where, when he's in the diner with Claire, uh, he's kind of lost in thought, and she goes, "What are you thinking about?" And he's like, "I was thinking about something that happened when I was a child." And she's like, "Oh," and he's like, "I was eight. No, wait, I was twelve. Um, me and my friend Jackie Chan." And she goes his name was jackie chan and like just when like it's nothing just goes yes and it's about him and his friend walking in the woods and near like this lake they find a trunk and they go to open it and it burns jackie chan's hand so he runs away and this is all shown in like that like a uh, not exactly black and white but like that sepia that brownish thing yeah like old-timey western photos yes and he opens the trunk and an old naked wizard looking guy comes out and in this weird like uh, distorted voice starts just saying nine lives and something else i couldn't tell what else he was saying but uh he doesn't tell claire that part about the old guy fucking popping out rubbing himself and saying nine lives over and over in a distorted voice he tells claire i can't remember Maybe that's why I was thinking about it when she asked him, well, what did you do? Um, mm. But I guess that's supposed to be the explanation of how he got the idea he did to bring his cat back. But they, they cut it out for some reason. And I like that scene because it plays very well with do I have a wife? Because it, it, you have to wonder how much does he rem- remember? How much is he making up completely in his head? Like he obviously never had a fucking wife. His cat did not die from overeating. Like, his cat died from old age because he had the cat. I think that tape said he got it for Christmas in 1988. Right. Like, he had the cat for a long fucking time. Um, so his, his game of, of what's real and what isn't is done very sparingly, but just enough to make it interesting. And I agree uh the entire scene at the dead cats anonymous is fantastic because i even i like his whole seizure thing he does when she's talking about like her being fucking raped at first i thought it was like jerking off right there in front of everybody (laughs) yeah i thought it was a sexual response to yeah i did too man happening right i was just like is he sitting there fucking goddamn about a nut in his pants in front of all these people you know, kind of like uh, this is the, the weirdest. Ad- this is the weirdest Pornhub video I've ever seen. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> no, it's not. It's like the Devil's Advocate. You remember that scene in the Devil's Advocate where he's like, where uh, they're in court and uh, the dude's sitting there and he's like grabbing at himself while the girl's talking about what the teacher did to him or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I was thinking. I was like, in front of all these people, this dude's about to nut his pants. What the fuck's going on here? You know, but I don't know, man. That was probably the best sequence to me in the whole movie. Like, I really was, like, not into that whole scene where, like, what's her name, Claire, where she's passed out after the the whole drinking blood thing happens through the funnel. Oh, okay, yeah, let's get to that real quick. Uh, are, wait, are there any important scenes we needed to cover before that? I think we got pretty much... Yeah, we we, sh- we shot through all those other all things. All the big things. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of like smaller things, but, uh, so she, after he kills the four girls, uh, above the rave, uh, people start reporting, oh, it was this guy with this cat, cat mask and shit. And she 
thinks back to her getting fucked by him and the cat mask on the lamp. Yeah. Um, so she figures out that it's him and she calls her friend to come over. Uh, but like literally right after she calls, he shows up with the cat claws, clap, cat penis, cat head, the red sweater, uh, you know, and ties her to a chair and she's got one of those, uh, fucking collars that you put on animals to keep them from biting their stitches. A cone. A cone. And, uh, he's just got a big trash bag or trash can filled with nine people's blood and his dead cat that he's had frozen in his freezer for God knows how long. Um, I can't say anything about keeping a pet in the freezer. Sometimes that's just what you got to do. Yep. Um, so, and he tells her, he's telling her, like, what's going on. And she's like, you didn't do this for your fucking dead cat, Patrick. You did this because you're a sick fuck. You got off on this sexually. And he starts, like, freaking out. He's like, no, I did it for Patrick. Uh, she headbutts him and is able to get the cat glove, cat claw glove that he took off of him. Uh, knock it over into her, get it on her hand, cut open the bonds, slash him in the face, in the neck, and he kind of, like, starts having another seizure and ends up running. Uh, before before she got the cat claw, though, he puts, like, a funnel in, and I can never tell if it's just, if it's in her mouth or if it's just in the, the cone. No, he taped it in her mouth. He taped it in her mouth, okay. So he tapes it in her mouth and starts pouring fucking just got a ladle scooping nine people's blood that that also has frozen cat body in there into her into the funnel that's going into her mouth and it's just, it's fucking gross um so uh he gets cut in the face gets cut in the neck runs away uh she gets found later by her friend and she looks like she has leprosy she is like fucking decaying and looks decrepit and shit like this. Um, her family take her to a. She gets end up getting put in a hospital because she's also now got this ballooning belly and she just worse and worse and is almost becoming primal. Like it's kind of losing her mind and, and it's just treated well. And she has to sleep next to a a Jesus statue that has not only a glowing chest that flash blue and red but his crotch flashes blue and red also uh which i'm not sure where you get that if someone knows let me know i'm trying to get uh police siren dick jesus statue <laughs> um well then she ends up in pain going to the bathroom going to the bathroom and uh you know our cat shows up. You, you you have Ted showing up, and she gives birth to this like mutant cat looking thing, and you know, and now she's getting rubbed by Ted, and she's all cool with it. She's like, "What are we gonna name him?" Uh, and then of course, she wakes up, and we realize that was all a dream, which is good because at that point, when I first watched this, I was like, "Okay, movie, you've gone too fucking far." Yeah, I can't buy I'm into so this. Weirded out by that. Uh, but then it's revealed that it's a dream. So, uh, Kenneth, I'm assuming you did not like this. I didn't. I didn't like it at all. And I mean, you know, the my first instance was exactly what you just said. I'm like, okay, I already really wasn't into this movie to begin with, and now this is kind of fucking, I was just like, whatever. You know, and then it comes out of it, and I'm like, what the fuck was that there for? It's really long for, a dream sequence is either the entire movie or small tiny intervals this scene for this is is long i don't know how long it feels like it's 15 fucking minutes right and i'm and i'm, I'm sitting there and i'm watching it and i'm like okay whatever the, i i just i just could not get into it you know and then it threw me out of the movie and then and then i'm supposed to be catapulted back into the normal thing that's going on with this chick and and i'm just like the the whole thing and then and then and then later on she starts getting flashes of dudes in her apartment and she fucking jumps out the goddamn window and I'm like, what the fuck? This is just stupid. I mean, I I, I just at that point, I, I, that right there is is the part that I was just like, the the best part of the ending to me was 
finally somewhat feeling at least barely sympathetic for our cat killer in his house when he died looking at Patrick's picture. Okay, so in retrospect, when I first watched this, I was kind of like, eh, I don't really care for this ending, but, you know, it was great up until this. Now, I really like it. I think it, it it's... Uh, this this woman who has gone from trauma to trauma to trauma just fucking over and over and over and it finally gets to a point where her mind's fucked like i can't even contemplate what my mind would be like in these circumstances and i completely get throwing yourself out the fucking window especially because he, he's already broken into your house he, he knows where you fucking live he can come and get you at any fucking time uh, and you just flip out and throw yourself out the fucking window. And we have a a, a a sunshine of hope here because she does live. We They show that her live. While the killer just kind of, Ted, just kind of pathetically ends up dying looking at a picture of his cat. Like, there's no, like... It's, and like I said, the whole time I'm watching the movie, this is the only time, this is the only time in this entire movie that I have any kind of, I guess any kind of emotional response to to anything in this movie is at this point. Yeah, that that, that's, and I understand that, but my point is more of long lines of, can you think of any other movie that ends like this in horror? Your final girl tries to kill herself because she's gone through way much trauma from the killer. The killer just kind of pathetically dies at his house alone. That like that's it. Like it, it feels so real life to me that that the the killer you know dies alone in his house and the the victim uh, ends up just trying to kill herself because she's gone through so much shit like they give us the ray of hope that she lives because let's be honest it, i think she lives on the second story she probably right. wasn't gonna fucking die anyway but not that she could really you she could have tried harder she she could have tried harder but she couldn't think she couldn't think she i don't think i actually now think about it maybe she wasn't trying to kill herself as much as she was trying to get away either way i just didn't like it i didn't like it because i felt like i felt like her going out the window was kind of like a what's the best thing that I can fucking think of it it was almost like it was trying to throw it back to the beginning of the movie some kind of which oh if she was choosing to die she was choosing to die the way her cat did not choosing but just kind of that's just way the fucking uh, the way everything fell and it was supposed to kind of bring it full circle but it to me it missed the mark you know and and like I said and I mean going back Going back to the uh, another thing that happened in the end of the movie was the guy at the beginning that raped her ended up hanging himself. Yeah, that was kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, well, I haven't seen this guy since the beginning of the movie, and honestly, to be perfectly honest, I've totally damn near forgotten about the guy himself. Not about what happened, Mm -hmm. but the dude himself. Agreed. (laughs) Agreed. I think they were trying to show... Why are they important? Oh, wait. (laughs) I think they were trying to do... The him was because of the hearing thing. Uh, I just knew it because of his fucking hair. Um, I think they were trying to do like the whole, like the, the bright light at the end of the, the like rainbow, like that there, there is hope, you know, the bad guys get theirs and, and the good people come out on top is what they were trying to do. But they just did it in a way to me that was so different than any other movie. I do think they missed the mark with, with the rapist hanging himself, um, But I do like that, like, she broke. Whether it was her trying to escape and choosing the dumbest way possible to escape, or her choosing to commit suicide, uh, I probably lean more to her just freaking out and trying to escape, uh, versus the killer dying alone pathetically, and then they're all in his house watching his shit, and they end the movie with us seeing this video of him as a child in what looks like to be a happy home uh, with his cat and his cat mask and his red sweater. And you just have to go, okay, he was so socially awkward. He couldn't make friends. So the only friend he had was his cat. And when you lose your only friend, you kind of understand why he would do anything to get that cat back, even though he's obviously 
uh, being led by by delusions from a mental illness. I mean, don't forget about Jackie Chan and the wizard guy. <laughs> Jackie Chan and the wizard guy that wasn't in the movie. They should have kept that really in. I wish we had gotten those home video clips at some point before the end of the movie. Agree. Uh, why, they though? felt the most emotionally sincere, and I think it would have made a world of difference having them somewhere else. I can't I can't exactly tell you where I would put them, but just somewhere, somewhere I, that wasn't the end, I think would have changed my perspective just slightly. I have to disagree. I think they work well at the end just because, like, I don't think this at any point in this movie, are you supposed to feel any connection or empathy for the killer up until the very end when you... you or when it's when he dies kind of pathetic and lonely and you're kind of like oh well he didn't go out with a bang and then it shows you know the family video of him and patrick and then you just kind of go oh wow yeah i mean i if i had a mental illness and my only friend my entire life was my cat and my cat dies like maybe i and i think this would have worked better if they would have kept the the scene of him talking about the old man in the trunk with his friend Jackie Chan, if they would have kept that in, that would have made the payoff of the end better because you would have looked back and been like, yeah, he's been delusional his whole life and his only friend was his cat, and really. Because I don't think Jackie Chan actually ever existed, much like his wife. Um, and so for me, the whole ending just works so fucking well because I think it's original. I think the, the dynamic of the two characters... And how they end their story in this movie is unique, and I I, I especially love the the death of Ted and the reveal of him getting Patrick uh, on on Christmas. I feel like that the fact that there was no no significant emotional response from me as an audience based on cues that were missed in this movie is what took me away from it. And that's because, fair. I just don't I think really, the movie was m- trying to do that. Right. And it made, and that's the reason why the fact that it was not trying is the reason why I didn't, it, because I feel like that if I would have had more of an emotional connection to Ted, I would have felt more fucked up about the movie and it would have done what, a movie like this should have done. You know, because we've talked about in the past how what makes a fantastic horror movie is those ones that fucking just get up underneath your skin and make you feel fucked up. And I feel like that the point of this movie was to do that. But the fact that I couldn't find any kind of emotional relation to me, to this guy who was doing these fucked up things, is what didn't make me feel fucked up. Yeah, I guess it does. It, like visually, it does a lot of fucked up stuff, but emotionally, it it it, it pulls its punches. Um, though I think it it leans more heavily on not making you feel fucked up as much as it it wants you to feel awkward. Yeah, but see, I didn't. I I mean, like, I didn't really feel awkward at all. I felt like he was awkward, but I didn't. Like I said, the whole movie, I'm just sitting there basically with my fucking chin in my hand just watching it. And I'm like, all right, what's next? Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay, well, looks like uh, our first choice up from this list, me and all the people who picked it, uh, we were wrong. Uh, but we do not apologize because I still recommend this movie heavily. I think it's fucking great. I do admit that everything Kenneth and Jay said for the most part was spot on. And this may be one of those movies where it either works for you or it just does not. I, there may not be a middle ground in this. Um, but I don't think so. Not with a guy with a cat dildo. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. And I feel, and I feel the same way about her. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just like uh, when it comes down to it, some absolutely terrible shit happened to this girl. I'm not denying that, you know, and and it it sucks of what she had to go through and whatever else. But I don't feel like with her, there was enough character building for the same thing. 
I don't feel like there was enough character building for me to really be able to feel her perspective as like you take a movie like Irreversible. Oh, Have I've never seen, seen I've never seen it. I've actually okay. never watched that one either. I know what it is and I okay. understand the concept, that but movie? I've never actually watched it. There is a rape scene in that movie where when Isn't you watch the that whole movie of the rape scene. No, it's <laughs> the whole movie. It, I mean, when it comes to this, when you get to that point, you feel throughout the entire movie, you feel these two. And the whole movie is just about this couple. And you feel the whole way what they're going through. They're, they're, everything is going on. And then when the rape scene happens, you're just like, oh, the whole time you're just sitting there like, oh my God. There, there, there are moments where you're watching it and you're like, should I turn my fucking head? Because I probably need to. I just you don't know? feel like this is that type of movie. Like, right. I don't feel I, like it's going for that. Like, I feel like... You're supposed to have a disconnect from from both characters. I think you're, there's supposed to be a, a wall there. I think it's supposed to be awkward. I mean, her rape scene is kind of awkward. Her normal sex scene's kind of awkward. Just everything about this movie is supposed to be this weird, awkward. It's it's like if fucking Michael Sarah was a, a fucking uh, serial killer, and and <laughs> you know like if they redid Juno except it was about giving birth to a cat baby like that's what this movie is um well, it, if it had if it had Michael Sarah and Elliot Page in it I probably would be more into it you, well they're both better actors <laughs> um <laughs> I'm just saying I just you know, realized what you guys were saying <laughs> Jesus um you know oh, I mean it, 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 I want like to watch that dude so, good movie. Uh, Kenneth, but, like, would you recommend this movie? Uh, I know the type of people that I would recommend this movie to. But you would all, but you wouldn't give it a wide recommend. You you this is a specified. Yes, for me it's definitely specified. Right. I would have to say overall, yes. I mean, if I were to recommend this to just your average everyday person, I would be like, "Yeah, check this movie out." But or I would ch- I would be like, yeah, you can watch that movie, but uh, <laughs> and then ha- it would always have to have a butt behind it because I wouldn't because there would there would not be there would definitely not be yes you should watch this movie it's fucking badass no that would not come out of my mouth this I'd feels be- this feels like digging up the marrow all over again well you should stop liking bad movies. <laughs> 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 Fuck you. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to sit here so and say this movie. It's so funny, though, that every time we put up a vote, your your thing is almost always winning. I am I am for the people. So you apparently know what people want, but me and Kenneth just don't agree with you. Uh, I mean, it was a tight run. Uh, Possessor almost made it. Oh, um, I I going to eventually anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. I think okay. Cat Sick Blues just won because I, I ever, like... Any of the the 2020 movies, like they've already heard 20 podcasts doing it, but there's not That's, there's not 20 podcasts in this past year that did Cat Sick Blues. There's probably not even five podcasts that did Cat Sick Blues. <laughs> probably not. Um, probably, I would be surprised if no one has talked about Cat Sick Blues on a podcast in this past year. Um, Honestly, when it really comes down to it, when we do Possessor, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, I, I'm I'm not gonna have the same. I can already tell you that I'm not going to have the same reaction that Jay had about the movie. Yeah. Have well, you, you and J- Kenneth, you and I already had a conversation on possessor. Yeah. Uh, which was a really good conversation. So I look forward to us, uh, talking about it. Um, but, uh, with cat sick blues, I still highly recommend this movie. If, if you like awkward, if you want an awkward horror movie, you got this. If you just want a giant cat penis dildo, you got it. If if like, if you just want a, a fucked up movie, I think it's fucked up enough that that it, it gets. It's obviously nowhere near as fucked up as or irreversible, apparently, or Sallow or Jay's favorite movie, a Serbian film. That's like, not my favorite movie. You told me that it it is. It, it's like if you took the Last Temptation of Christ. And a Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Warriors, and you put them together, you would get a Serbian film, and it deserves an Oscar. That's what you said to me one night in my dream when I was asleep. 
<laughs> Do you deny saying these things? Keywords. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will never say even this. Seen the Last Temptation of Christ? I have. It's a good movie. Um, I will say this though: Cat Sick Blues definitely makes me feel bad for every female cat when they go into heat. Uh, I'm sorry. Say that because again. Just... For every female cat when they go into heat, because if a cat's dick actually really looks like that thing, even on a small scale, oh my god, I feel bad for the female cats. Well, cats do have barbs, di- barb dicks. I know that. So, yeah, but if it yeah. looks like that, oh my god. That yeah, that's true. Poor fucking cat. I'm glad that my cat is fixed. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, cast has his doesn't have his balls, so but he also only humps for like 2 seconds before his fat ass gives up, so I think I think uh I think the kitten will be fine. I mean, because it it, it makes me look back on every time, you know, cuz I grew up in the country, so it makes me look back on every time that I walked outside in the middle of the night and I heard a cat hollering in the fucking woods, and I'm just like Yep, I know why now. I get it now. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, everyone, that was our review of Cat Sick Blue. I give it two thumbs up. Robert Ebert and his fucking twin over here give it two thumbs down. Fuck them. Uh, I give it a cat dick up. (laughs) I'll put it to you this way. I give it one thumb sideways in between. You got to admit, though. It is original. It's yeah, pretty wild. I will give it all the originality credit that ever existed. Yeah. So That's for fucking sure. Well, with that being said, uh, our next episode, you I guess you guys will be picking again because I don't feel like trying to do a horror coliseum. Uh, so... Your the uh, another poll will go up in an, in a couple of days or a week after this episode comes out, and your choices will be down to eight. Your choices will be Spree, Piercing, Anything for Jackson, Hereditary, Possessor, Rosemary's Baby, The Taking of Deborah Logan, and Ravenous. If y'all had to guess, what movie do you think is going to win, Kenneth? What movie do you think is going to win? I think it's going to be between Hereditary and Possessor. Okay, Jay, what do you think? I don't know, if Possessor almost won this one, I would guess Possessor. I think everyone's going to back me up and choose Piercing. No, I'm just kidding. Piercing is going to be one of the last ones we do. No one I've knows. I've never even heard of that movie. No one knows. I didn't know about this movie until a month ago. Um, But it's super fucking good. What um, was the last Coliseum that we did? What was the last Coliseum? Nightmare I don't. Freddy. Have we Nightmare not done Jason, wasn't it? one since a Nightmare Friday? No, there's no way. Really? I'm pretty sure. We took a break after that series, and then we never came back to it. Holy shit. I think. I mean, don't quote me. I could be wrong, but... We need to do a horror coliseum, guys. That's the reason why I was asking, because, like, when you said that, you said you didn't feel like doing one, and I'm like, it made me think about it. I'm like, when is the last coliseum that we did? Okay. And if it, if if it was Freddy and Jason, then it's been a minute. Okay, if I can come up with a really good coliseum... We and, have a list full of ideas. Just pick one. Uh, okay, hold up a second. Let me hold up a second. I'm about to pull this up. Uh, where, where if I can spell? Okay, hold up. Uh, or do I have it under? <laughs> now I'm gonna find it. I take too many notes. Deliverance versus Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, okay. Here are <laughs> I do. Okay, I have. <laughs> what the fuck? um okay here are some of the ideas i have uh written down the howling versus an american werewolf in london scream versus cabin in the woods jason goes to hell versus jason x versus Uh, versus cabin in the woods uh hold on let me finish uh zodiac versus black dolly and murder hills have eyes versus wrong turn wait didn't we do that nope we never did why did I watch those movies? Because um, <laughs> they're good movies, bro. Last House on the Left versus I Spit on Your Grave. Anaconda versus Deep Blue Sea versus Lake Placid. <laughs> uh, Pieces versus Torso. Uh, Creep Show versus Trick or Treat, which apparently we have. To, I wrote my notes in all caps with Venom, so I guess we have to have Venom, Jerry Cortez on there. Um, I Know What You Did Last Summer versus Urban Legend. 
Deep Rising versus Le- Leviathan, Bait versus Crawl, uh, Universal versus Hammer. So I guess we were just going to pick uh, like a Dracula versus Dracula or, or I've never seen one of those any Hammer films. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, Night of the Creeps versus Slither, Frankenhooker versus Patchwork, Midsummer <laughs> versus Wicker Man, The Descent versus The Ruins, Interview with the Vampire versus The Copula Dracula. John Carpenter's Vampire versus From Dust Till Dawn. The, oh, that's a good one too. Uh, the Grudge versus Ring. We can either do the the original Japanese or the remakes. Uh, Blood and Black Lace versus The Bird with Crystal Plumage. Lake Mungo versus Pulse from Most Depressing Movie of All Time. And then apparently I have a Horror Coliseum three episode series: Texas Chainsaw Massacre versus Evil Dead. Texas Chainsaw Massacre two versus Evil Dead two. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Remake versus Evil Dead Remake. I feel like that could be cursed. And then, hell yeah, Nicki Minaj versus Cardi B. Horror Coliseum. We're doing it. <laughs> can, can, and Anaconda versus WAP. We're doing it. <laughs> Only here. By the way, I'm voting on WAP. Macaroni in the pot. You need to know about it. Uh, I'm, apologies. You drop your coffee pot. Apologies to Ben Shapiro's wife. Uh, <laughs> nah, fuck that bitch. She married him. Okay, she knew people. It. She knew it just was. Okay, first of all, they're extremely Jewish. She may have not had a choice in the matter. Okay, Jewish. Ben Shapiro is Jewish. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. How do you not know this? Because I try not to pay attention to stupid people. You know, I I, I don't want to talk about like Ben Shapiro positive or negative but i said something i got i do want to say something positive about ben shapiro i watched an interview with ben shapiro and he said that his religious beliefs and every other person's religious beliefs should have no bar bearing on laws they should not be in they should not be brought up for laws it doesn't matter if he doesn't like gay people or don't or or doesn't think gay people should get married because I don't know if he actually doesn't like gay people, but he he does have the personal belief that gay people should not be married. He does not think that should affect the law, the government. Now, when it really comes down to it, Ben Shapiro's thing is is he's just like I have my own personal religious beliefs. This is what he said about gay marriage, gay people all together. He's just like my religious beliefs say that you should you should not you know same sex but it's not my place to tell people what they do you do you exactly if you ask me oh, i'm gonna tell people you people what they should be doing he's like if you ask me i'm gonna tell you yeah but now note if he was christian his opinion would be completely different uh and he would think it would control laws uh but nonetheless I just want to put that out there. Now that we're done being the psychosemantic podcast, shout out to Darren. Um, we'll, we'll move on. So uh, when this comes out, um, I don't know, guys. If y'all want to, we'll, we'll talk about doing a horror coliseum. We'll do a horror coliseum if it's not somewhere in the next three episodes. Will be a horror coliseum because we also want to do an episode with uh, the Friday Nightmares podcast um, doing. Uh, uh, that. Run hide, uh, the run hide fight. So you yeah. say it? Speaking of Ben Shapiro, yeah. run hide fight. We want to do a, a big show with them. So that actually may be the next episode. <clears throat> and then after that, it'll either be a movie from the list or it will be a horror coliseum. We'll figure it out. We'll let you know. And uh, I say we do run hide fight if we can, and then we do another one from the list, and then we do a coliseum. That's the way I say. It. Done. I can agree. Bang the gavel. It's been decided. Okay. Can- so. Somewhere in that, that, somewhere in what they, what Kenneth just, Kenneth just laid out the plan. We are going to try our best to make that plan happen. You hear um, it, Heather? You better be on. And yeah, Heather, we, we were supposed, we were going to do it tonight, but Heather was like, "I've got to watch the Super Bowl. I'm Canadian." Fucking stupid Super Bowl. Who gives a shit about football? Yeah, fucking watch Phantasm instead of <laughs> watching the Super Bowl. Um. But, uh, so, I hope you guys are used to these shorter episodes that are barely over an hour long, because if we do an episode 
uh, on, w- with the Friday Nightmares, or if we do a horror coliseum, we're going to be hitting that two-hour mark again. Yep. But there's a lot of shows that go for, you know, three to fucking 17 hours. We like to be a little <laughs> bit shorter, give you a little bit of a, of, of a bite-sized meal. Uh, that's just how we do it. So we're going to end it here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the support. We hope we put out great content that you uh, love. Uh, love your cats. Um, follow me on TikTok. Hey, what's... Follow Jay yeah. on TikTok. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to think of some of those some of those shows that you're talking about. They're like seven, eight hours long. Uh, twenty two one called like twenty two candlesticks to set the mood or something. Uh, yeah, twenty two shots of moods and horror. Oh are, yeah, yeah. Are are <laughs> always super fucking long. Um, yeah. Sorry guys, that is my first and only ever shot y'all uh yeah uh the only long episodes i ever am on that are that fucking crazy long are usually the the podcast under the stairs summer series which it's starting there's two new people have been added uh we're doing the 2000s this year uh i'm i'm excited uh i don't know what years i'm gonna get or no we're doing the 2010s we're doing the 2010s. You don't even like it for movies, Jerry. We're doing the 2010s. Um, well, if I get early 2010s, I may be all right. Has there been a new Bigfoot movie that's come out recently? Uh, no, but if you haven't watched The Hold Geek on. from the 70s. I just watched 70s, one that was a recent one. Uh, when I say recent, I mean like the last couple of years. Give me a second. When I did it exist out come out? An Abominable. Yeah, Abominable. Maybe that is the one I'm thinking of. That's 2019. Okay. Oh, wait. Sorry. That's the cartoon. (laughs) Because I know I watched uh, that one I told y'all about. Was it Primal Rage or something? Oh, yeah. You said it was good. Yeah, that one was good. One of the best ones that I've ever seen was Exist. And it was terrible. Um, Exist is good. That was probably, to me, that's my favorite Bigfoot movie. Yeah. Exist is really good. Um,. Willow Creek. Is that the one Bobcat Goldwaif directed? Did he do Willow Creek? His uh, God Bless America is good. Uh, his his Bigfoot movie's not good. There's like a whole. Well, have you ever seen? Recommend God Bless me America? ones that are actually decent. Uh, The Geek. It's about Bigfoot fucking women. It's a porno from the seventies. <laughs> Uh no I uh, uh, I like Bigfoot's dick I like uh, technically Bigfoot technically not I like uh the Abominable Snowman of the Himalayans uh that was done by Hammer in the 1950s but it, it, you probably wouldn't like it um I really can't think of a lot of good Bigfoot movies buddy uh we'll ask the audience post in the Facebook group good Bigfoot movies for Kenneth. Uh, I think I'm fixing to start getting on all the movies that I missed in 2020. Uh, not not a not a bad idea. There's like what fucking three of them on our list, it's, but only one of them I haven't seen. Are they I, from me? <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't. No, uh, yes, uh, I haven't seen anything for Jackson. I think that's the only one I hadn't seen it's that's so on that list. I of really movies. recommend that movie to anybody who's listening, but especially you two. Yeah, I don't, Kenneth, you can check out Saint Maud. You may. I don't, know, I don't know how yeah. you'll how you'll like it. Don't bother with that one. <laughs> uh, I think it's decent. No. I think if you remember my complaints about Hereditary and the Witch, it does not do that. I'll say that. I want to. Oh, but I'm probably not going to like it. Pops open. Yeah, that's true. Uh, if it I, doesn't do all the things that you disliked about those two movies, then I'm probably not yeah, going to like. Ever, everyone still like. Uh, but I don't get it because everyone's like sucking Saint Maud's dick, and me and Chelsea watched it, and afterwards we were both just kind of like, it was okay, but it wasn't yeah, like is I'm this at. it well, like, it's like everybody talked up Midsummer too, and when I watched it, I was just like, it was good, but it wasn't the greatest shit ever. Yeah, I didn't but think see, Midsummer was what great. What kind of range is that? Why is that everyone's default range? Oh man, everyone is hyping it up. Oh, that wasn't the best movie. It's like that's not. Just because a bunch of people enjoyed it doesn't mean that some everyone thinks it's the greatest movie ever. It always confuses me. 
Yeah, but everybody that I talked to thought it was the greatest movie ever, and then I watched it. And I'm no. Like, well, I just think I, I, I think who, that's. Who did you talk to this? That yep, this is the best horror movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, my friend William said that. Well, your friend William's an idiot, then. <laughs> okay. No, I think this is a common thing we we have in any in any genre of any movie or or anything. People hype up things that they really that really connect with them and really like, like me with Cat Sick Blues. And then that hype, uh, unfortunately, other people, whether they want to or not, because I try not to get affected by the hype, but sometimes you get affected by the hype, and then you go and watch it, and it's not that I'm disappointed because it didn't live up to that hype. I just go, I don't understand why y'all hyped it up. Yeah, it, I, I guess I guess that's where I can where I can get with like a movie like Midsummer, because I'm like, okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it still had the same feel of like hereditary and whatever else. The the you know it was just the the art house film of it and whatever else. It was still kind of slow. There are things about that movie that I didn't know that I know now that I think are kind of cool. But overall, I'm like, okay, it was entertaining. You know, so looking into certain movies, uh, that's like the new movies of 2020. Going back to like Saint Maud, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm hoping that it's decent. But there are other movies that people have talked up from 2020 that I haven't seen, like and what? then there, uh, most of them <laughs> that well, I mean, people have talked good, about yeah. said it was good, you know. And then I've heard other people say that, you know, uh, talking about like the Dark and the Wicked, you know, other people are just like, eh, it was all right, I didn't really get it, blah blah blah. And then I watched the Dark and the Wicked, and that movie was fucking amazing. I still need to watch that. Is it on a streaming service? Uh, wasn't it on? Isn't it on Shutter? I think. Oh. Um, I can quick. check really quick. Yeah, no, because I, I I saw Dark and the Wicked. I immediately told Kenneth I was like, dude, Dark and the Wicked's fucking sick. Um, because I did a double feature and I watched like that and uh, Spell, I think. Oh, it is on. Sh- oh, it says coming soon. There's a new movie on here called The Night A Nightmare Wakes: The Birth of Frankenstein. What? All I know, I got two horror documentaries I gotta watch that are on my queue. I gotta watch those. I don't have time for horror movies. I only watch horror documentaries. I don't want to oh watch God, the movie. Listen. I want to watch people so, talk about the movies. I was high last night. I'm actually a little high right now. I was high last night, and I was going through Tubby's reality TV shows because sometimes... Oh, time I'm out. Doing... Time out. Did you say Tubby? Yeah. It's Tubby. Well, T U B spells tub. You add an I and it goes E. So, tubby. <laughs> I can understand your logic. Okay, but the commercials for Tubi call it Tubi. I've just never so seen you know. A commercial for I, I'm just letting you know. I don't want you to 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 mispronounce the 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 uh. channel's pronoun. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking help you out, educate you. This episode of Kill the Cats brought to you by Tubi. <laughs> To be sponsored. Anyhow, us. continue. I'm very and curious. Lord what VPN. You were saying. Um, <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. Um, <laughs> so I was looking for a terrible reality show to watch while I ate my pizza, and I came across a show that only has one episode called Horror Hunters, and it's basically American Pickers for horror memorabilia, where these two guys who are huge collectors go to different collectors' house and try and trade for stuff that they want. But there's only one fucking episode. I was like, I've never heard of this show. Apparently it came out in 2016. I would have watched every episode of this thing. For yeah, I, I want to watch upset. that. Kind of disappointed. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I want to watch that. Also, just so you know, Jay, I don't know if you can read while you're high, uh, but uh, oh <laughs> Tubi, <laughs> Tubi, Tubi also has Common Rider, the OG Common Rider. I know. So, I want to watch all of the, the. Check that out. So Katsu. How do you say that word? Oh, the to to to. Oh, I, I can't pronounce Japanese words. <laughs> yeah. Tokusatsu. Wanna, no, I'm just kidding. Tokusatsu. I, I'd love to sit down and watch all those shows. I'd love to sit down and watch every season of Common uh, Common Rider and Super Sentai. I'm just never gonna do it. <laughs> I'm I'm I've watched the first two episodes of Common Rider. I'm watching it with Chelsea, uh, because I force her to watch weird shit sometimes. But I did not make her watch Cat Sick Blues. So maybe I'm a good person. Um, At least a little bit. But I, but I, I would, but I did watch Saint Maud with her. But that's her fault. She wanted to watch it. Oh, okay. Well, that's good then. Um, 
Okay, we're gonna get out of here. We've been talking. We've been bullshitting for like 15 minutes talking about fucking nothing. That's the best part. If you're still listening to us, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going to get out of here. We love you all. See us in the Facebook group. Check out them fire memes I be posting on the Kill the Cast fan page. Jay is now on TikTok. Kenneth has Instagram. My OnlyFans is coming soon. We love oh, you. Yes. <laughs> I just bought a new fan because I'm fucking 33, uh, and it's a really cool fan. Um, I'm going to take pictures, and y'all will see my only fan. <laughs> I'm done. Game over. Good night. Thank you for supporting us. You should make an OnlyFans and literally just post pictures and videos of a fan working. <laughs> just me, like, humping the fan and meowing. No, no human involved at all. Like, literally just record just... different fans put lingerie on the fans <laughs> i'm doing it oh we're just put I need to make you, it you gotta you gotta put lingerie on the fans no it's literally just gonna be fans only fans <laughs> how to make an only fan. okay we're done we're out of here uh <laughs> kenneth do you have any last words for us you know you should totally put on a cat mask and make an only fans like for real if someone can show me where to buy this cat mask, I will make a work account. What? You have a work only fans account? No, it was asking me for oh. which Gmail account to use. I was like, probably not the I was gonna say, man, what kind of shit what kind of shit are you posting online while you work on them cell phones? <laughs> yeah, what do you I, create? I keep joking that I'm going to go into their phones and subscribe them to our podcast. Yeah, don't do that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's funny. Seems like a bad idea. Uh, we're out of here. We're done. Goodbye. No more bullshit. Kenneth said that I should buy a cat mask. Someone tell me where to buy the cat sick blues mask. I will buy the fuck out of that thing. Uh, My, well. Good night and meow. Meow. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.